the number one strategy is every single piece of content that you choose to put out on LinkedIn has to be value added and is leaving that person better. Welcome to Entertain Me. Hosted by Roberto Capodieci. In this podcast, we bridge the worlds of new and old technologies, meet incredible individuals, and delve into past visions of the future. Get set for an exciting exploration of the interconnection between technology and life with Roberto Capodieci on Interchain Me. You're now listening to Learn with Rob. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode in Interchain Me, Learn with Roberto. We are here with an amazing guest, Scott Aaron. He is an expert in communication and marketing. We're going to pick his brain to learn how to promote ourselves, our business uh, with the tools that there are. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to the show, Aaron. Well, Roberto, uh, grateful to be here and looking forward to the conversation. Fantastic. So let's go straight with uh, uh, the first question. You, so you're recognized as a to-go person for leveraging LinkedIn uh, to drive business success. Uh, yes. Can you share your top strategies uh, for uh, professionals that are looking to promote their self, themselves in LinkedIn? Yeah, I would say um, a couple things. If, you, if you're looking to really promote yourself or showcase yourself as a business professional on LinkedIn, first and foremost, you always have to think about the people that you're looking to serve. So who your ideal client and target market is, and there are various ways that you can serve them in that way. Uh, I would say that the number one way is to make sure that the content that you're providing on LinkedIn, not only is it consistent, but uh, everything that you're doing is value added. And, and the thing, uh, Roberto, that I see is a, the biggest problem is people are not giving enough value. And they're afraid to because they feel if I give too much value, if I give too many tips and information, then people won't have the need for working with me, which is actually the complete opposite. Because the way that you have people cross the bridge to wanting to work with you is to under promise and over deliver. And that is something that I truly believe in. So the person that's watching this or listening to this that is wondering, you know, well, what's the best strategy? The number one strategy is every single piece of content that you choose to put out on LinkedIn has to be value added and is leaving that person better. That's absolutely true. I notice because I, I go totally random and I post things. But uh, whenever I post something that is really uh, a good answer, something that people will search, uh, it expands and, uh, and spread very fast. Uh, but in yep. an era where digital marketing feels a little bit impersonal, uh, uh, there is need of human connection. So how do you balance uh, automation of uh, messages out, for example, with uh, a personal touch? Well, uh, everything that I do on LinkedIn is actually by hand, and that's what I teach. It's a it's a 20 minute a day method. So what, what people need to be forewarned, uh, the only automation that LinkedIn actually approves uh, is pre-scheduling your content. So LinkedIn has their own scheduling tool where you can pre-schedule your videos, your posts, your polls, your pictures, your documents, your newsletters, your articles. But when you are signing up for LinkedIn, and a lot of people don't know this, and you click that little checkbox that says that you're, you're going to agree to the terms and conditions of the user agreement of LinkedIn, you're actually agreeing that you will not use any software that connects and messages for you. Um, so LinkedIn has really been cracking down on this, um, not just restricting accounts. If they find that there is software attached uh, to an account, uh, they're just deleting the accounts altogether and people are having to start from scratch. So when you're when you're really doing things the right way on LinkedIn, you're taking the time to genuinely connect with people, but also genuinely message people in a very humanizing way. And you're seeing a lower rate of people accepting connections and a lower rate of people responding to messages because 
of a lot of the people that are still using using automation tools to message. And you could you could tell which ones are automated because they're written in this um, this eighteen uh, paragraph drunkalog verbal verbal vomit message form where it's just like on and on and on and on. There's a sales pitch at the end. There's a link at the end. So the more that you humanize your activity, mm. LinkedIn is a farming platform. It's not a hunting platform. The person that plants the most seeds is going to reap the greatest harvest. And that's the way that you want to approach it. Okay, that's fantastic. Actually, very true as well. I never use automation uh, things, but I see that people do. And I thought oh, yeah. that was going to be a strategy, but actually, you correct me. This is correct. And they, that, and uh, they think that we can't tell either. Like, right. w whenever you see a message come through and it says, Dear Scott Aaron, like, <laughs> no one says your first and last name in an opening line. It's it's the first name uh, only. So There was also this right. trick to put an emoji in your name to see if uh, people will address you with the emoji inside. It's, exactly. Uh, you know exactly like, correct then you know yes this is absolutely true so what are the the key tips to create engaging and valuable content in a generic generic way i mean oh. uh, i would say the best way um is to be a a problem solving individual so when you're looking to produce thought-provoking and value-added content you always think about the solution that you're solving for people so depending upon uh, what service you're providing, you know, whether it's, it's coaching, consulting, um, you know, a service professional, think about the overarching problem that your ideal client prior to working with you is having. And then you want to speak to that. So when you can highlight a known problem that someone is having in your network, but at the same time provide a very specific solution, it's going to bridge that gap between the person that doesn't know you to now know you to then slowly walk across to wanting to do more with you. So the simplistic thing that I always tell people is put yourself in the passenger side perspective, meaning every piece of content that you provide, whether it's a, a short form video or even a long form LinkedIn live training, whether it's a market research poll question, a long form post or a newsletter edition. Make sure you're putting yourself in that person's shoes. So just to give you an example, most if not all the stuff that I do on LinkedIn is to educate people on the proper way to use LinkedIn. So um, to give you an example, uh, I did a post the other day uh, asking people if they knew what the SSI score was, which is your social selling index score on LinkedIn. It, it's free. You can literally Google it. Um, it's connected to LinkedIn Sales Navigator, uh, and you can basically LinkedIn rates your social selling index score within four categories, the network, optimization of your profile, um, relationship building, and analytics. And they give you a score of, of one to 100. Mine is like at a 75, which puts me in the top 1% in the industry that I'm in. And then it shows you basically compared to other people in the industry, the average was like 32%. So I was, you know, more than double what they were. But I asked my network, did you know about this? And the majority of the people said they didn't. So now I, I know there's a known pain point. People don't, A, know about the SSI, but they don't know the benefit to it. So what I did was I then wrote a newsletter edition dedicated to teaching people what the SSI score was on LinkedIn what it means for you and your business and how you can raise your score if it's a, on the lower level of things. So everything that you should be doing is providing extra value, information, education, industry its insights, industry updates of what's going to position you as the expert in your space viewed by that person. Fantastic. And what do you suggest people do? Convert uh, connection in LinkedIn uh, into something to bring elsewhere, like in your own newsletter, in your own website, or keeping them in LinkedIn and work directly there? You always want, so it's a great question because what people fail to recognize is that social media platforms are rented land. You're literally the, the, the landlord uh is the owner of the platform and you're just a tenant and 
and you're, they, you're, well, <laughs> they they control everything. So if you are not finding a way to get people from online to offline into maybe some sort of ESP or an email service provider that you have, you will be out of business very, very quickly. And LinkedIn it knows this and, and LinkedIn wants people to connect offline. So you can do different things in, in the headline of your LinkedIn profile. You can put a call to action clickable link um, such as um, you know, visit my website here. Um, you know, check out my uh, my podcast here. Book a free call here. You know, learn to work with me here. So now you're getting people from your LinkedIn profile to opt in for something, take them to your website or your download to move them through that nurture process. The other thing is, in in all of the content that you can share, you can put calls to action. You know, if you want to learn more how to work with me, here's my website. If you want to learn, you know, from my latest podcast episode, here's the link to go listen to it. So if not all of your strategy, a good portion of your strategy should be figuring out ways to turn those connections into qualified leads offline. I don't care how many connections that you have. I care about how many of those connections have turned into emails that you've captured that you're now nurturing offline. Okay, that's a good thing. So you want to direct control to the connection you have and don't rely on a third party like LinkedIn. So as a tool to get them and then you need to control your connection with these people directly. Something Absolutely. you mentioned a few times and obviously it's something that you know very well as I do. We are both have a podcast, so we both host podcasts. And is this a tool that is really convenient in business? Honestly, I don't know if indirectly, but nobody ever told me, like, I saw you in the podcast, I want to work with you now. You know, how, how does it work for you? Yeah, no, I, I mean, we have a, my, my wife and I have a group coaching mastermind. And one of our most recent members that just joined, joined through our podcast. And um, he, he, you know, scheduled a call on my calendar. Um, and when I got on there, you know, I said, so how did you hear about me? And he goes, I've been listening to your podcast for about a year and a half. Uh, I love everything that you share. And um, I, I heard that you guys have a group coaching mastermind and I want to hear about it. And I told him about it. And he goes, how do I sign up for it? <laughs> I said, here's the link. Go sign up. And he did. So a, a pod, our podcasts, uh, my, my wife and I have separate podcasts, but we do interviews together. Um, you know, we do like collabs, her and I. It's an amazing lead generation tool because when you have that wide audience, so whether you're having a workshop, whether you're opening uh, the doors to a program um, or a course that you have, that's your call to action because there's so many things that happen on the back end of a podcast. Not only is someone listening to the episode and getting the call to action, they then go to the description of the episode where you can put hyperlinks where it can then take them through something. Um, also, when, when someone is really staying in tune with your podcast, they're going to get an email. So like what we do is um, we email our entire list every time one of our podcast drops awesome. because people are on, on our email list to get communication from us. So now we're driving traffic to that and it also keeps them in the know of what's going on. So one of the biggest things that we actually teach in our mastermind is starting your own podcast because it's not only a way to market your skill set, it's a way to showcase your expertise, but it's an unbelievable lead generation tool, but also collaboration tool, just like you and I. You know, you were a guest on my podcast. Now I'm a guest on your podcast. My audience knows about you. Your audience knows about me. And there's so many amazing things that happen on the back end side of that. Okay, that makes sense and works. Okay, so one thing. So say that now there is a, a kid is out of school, is 20 something, and he want to start is you know, like career, having a strong online presence and capturing. What are mistakes that usually people do that uh, you can address somebody not to do when they're starting this thing and uh, which are the right things to do uh, in, uh, in uh, making themselves known? 
uh, on LinkedIn. In general, but on LinkedIn, in, general. in and out, yes. Well, I, I would say the, the advantage that people have nowadays is that there are so many resources and tools out there. And, you know, uh, when I got, you know, I owned uh, a couple of brick and mortar businesses back in the day. I was in the fitness industry and I started in the late 90s. So if, if your company had a website, you were like ahead of the times. Nowadays, you know, you can build a website on Canva, you know, for free. Like, I mean, there are so the, the, the wrong way is th that what I see a lot of people doing is uh, having that mindset of desperation in the sense of they, they're starting a business, they want it to work, so they spray and pray. They're just selling and pitching all day long. Th they're going away from the relationship marketing aspect and they're just you know spamming people, which mm. something that I always remind people is that you get one chance at a great first impression. So if the first impression that you're leaving on someone is a sales pitch when they don't know, like, or trust you, they're never going to know, like, and trust you. So for that person that's just starting in business, network your butt off. I mean, literally seek to connect with people that are a few steps ahead of you, pick their brain, network with them, learn from people. That's the thing. The time that, that newer entrepreneurs should be spending is learning from people that are already succeeding in what they want to do. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, right? You know, if, if there's a path that's already been blazed, go down it and you will be amazed and surprised at how available these people actually are. Everyone thinks that all these people are untouchable. They're not untouchable. You just have to reach out and ask, hey, can I get five or 10 minutes of your time? Hey, do you have any advice on this? What should I do? And, you know, the right person is going to give you some free advice because, I mean, people ask me all the time for advice and I never say, well, you're going to have to pay me this. No, <laughs> like, here's some advice, you know, go, go do it and then, you know, report back and let me know how things are going. So don't get ahead of yourself. Do not put the cart in front of the horse. Do your research, network your butt off and above all else, make sure that the relationships that you're building are going to withstand the test of time, because that's when business really starts to grow, when you really double, triple and quadruple down on those relationships. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, and to recap, like, no, no, be afraid to ask and uh, give as much as you can because people appreciate and then they want to work with you. It's funny, uh, a guy I knew, he had an idea one day to start his website for listing jobs like this, and uh, he starts streaming online himself, coding the website. And oh, there wow. were three people following him at the beginning. Later, he became one of the most profitable in the world uh, until then he being replaced in the specific of uh, Web3. And uh, the, the idea of sharing, sharing the experience, uh, involving people that feel part of uh, your uh, your project, uh, that can give a suggestion. It really, uh, I admire this guy because it is really something that he said. He didn't care. I mean, I do it anyway. I can stream it. Nobody follow me. Tomorrow to people, yeah. tomorrow 100 and so on. So really summarize all these things very, very well. Um, and, uh, you know, just to <laughs> to come toward the close of this beautiful chat and uh, so many insights uh, we got from you. So uh, in, in the overall, uh, what do you believe is the best uh, um, action somebody can do to maintain his brand, uh, personal brand, uh, maybe related to a company, but mostly personal brand, uh, active with time. You know, we're talking just about 20 years old to start. Now let's yeah. go to where the 50 plus years old that is already doing his career for many years as his people. So he wants to leave a little bit of uh, an impromptu, have a persona that is out being recognized as well. Uh, at what, you know, you have... Uh, a past of experience, uh, yeah. which is the best, uh, the best uh, kind of action this person should, should take. Well, it's it's your digital footprint that people will follow, and and that's the thing. You know, you want to be so known, and not in the sense of like putting yourself on a pedestal, but make it really easy for people to reach out to you or to engage in your content. So, if anyone goes onto Google and literally types in Scott Aaron LinkedIn, 
you're going to get a treasure trove of information, not just my website, not just my LinkedIn profile, but hundreds of podcasts that I've been on my own podcast articles that I've written. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there. You know, I, I can't begin to share. So there's a great book and I'll recommend this book for anyone that's starting off or is seasoned. It's called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Um, it's a book that everybody should read, no matter how seasoned or unseasoned you are. This book will impact you more than you can ever know because it clearly defines the activities of an amateur in business compared to the activities of a professional in business. And the amateurs don't make it. It's the professionals that make it. So to maintain that strong personal and business brand, you have to maintain a strong online presence. Consistency is the key. The compounded effect, uh, which is beautifully written in the, in the book, The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, it, it states everything. Small daily actions compounded over time lead to a greater result. So it's not what you're doing right now. It's what you're doing every single day over time. So don't be afraid to overshare. Don't be afraid to give too much value. But more importantly, be as consistent as you can in the online space. Do not throw spaghetti at the wall and expect it to stick because it's not. You want to maintain that strong online presence, that strong online brand, but also your messaging. Be very congruent with what you share. If you look at any of my content on social media, it is streamlined. It is the same. You're not going to get mis mixed messaging. It's the same thing. Brand oh, recognition. Jesus. Yeah. Brand recognition is built upon the backs of brand consistency. Super. So yeah, what for some people is a bad thing, the internet uh, doesn't delete anything, everything remains there, is uh, actually very good things for those that want to brand. Because as you say, daily work piles up in the long term with a lot of uh, content. So being able to look and search uh, into the past of somebody, it really piles up a lot. Yep. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for letting me pick your brain. Uh, and uh, for everybody else, uh, stay tuned, uh, subscribe, like, do whatever you need to do. And uh, let's see you at the next episode uh, of Interchain Me, Learn with Roberto. Thank you very much. Bye. You're listening to Interchain Me.